Hi, my name is Samantha and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the Lee Sport Farmer's Market. Let's get into it. So last weekend I was at the Lee Sport Farmer's Market. It was, um, I should have wrote down the date, I believe it was May 11th. It was the Saturday of Mother's Day. It was my first time there. Um, I didn't go out and scout the place at all and I have to say I was really impressed. Um, it took me about an hour to get there, no tolls, so I, I appreciated that. And it was my first successful show of the year, <sighs> finally. So um, the Lee Sport Farmer's Market, um, from what I read on like their website and stuff, I was expecting to like be in the middle of a field under like a giant canopy, right? Was what I was getting from it. But when I pulled up, it was like I was in the middle of a neighborhood and then boom, there was this farmer's market and it was all asphalt. So I was pleasantly surprised to not have to deal with any like gravel or grass or dirt or mud. So um, I was very happy for that. Um, it was from nine till three so i left the house around 6 30 ish so i got there like 7 30 ish and i was able to just not all the spots are like this but the spot i had i was able to just like pull up my car and unload which was awesome i've never had such an easy show to like just unload all my stuff right there have my car right there easily accessible now had there been any inclement weather it would have been terrible because like the sides are open it was essentially an asphalt parking lot sorry super loud car sorry about that i swear every time i'm on a conference call or i start filming uh either the guys start cutting the grass or the loud truck guy starts his car so sorry about that uh so the uh, the way that it is is like this giant asphalt parking lot with this like awning for lack of a better word and it's like a permanent structure and there's three rows of booths so the two outer rows your car can get parked and then you just unload right there the middle row you do not have that luxury so i definitely would not do the show if i was the middle row and then the other thing is they do have like the grass lot in the back 40 which you can like set up a tent i would not do that either so i would only go there if i was able to be under what they call a sheltered space um I did end up signing up for uh, two of their upcoming shows. They have four upcoming, but one of them they only have unsheltered, and I'm not doing that. So I signed up for the July show, which is July 13th from 9 to 3, and then the Fall Market Festival, which was which is October 12th from 10 to 5. Um, that being said, let's talk about the show I was at. So I paid $75. I overpaid because I had registered on accident for the Easter show, and I messed up. I meant to do the Mother's Day one. And this is one of the cons about the place is that the way that it works is you see the events on their website and like either you have to email them to confirm that what you want as a spot is available. And I don't mean like I want booth X number. I'm saying like the building you want to be in. You don't know. Like you just have to like pay them and it's non-refundable. So I messed up and I paid for the Easter show instead of the May show. And I emailed them and they were able to move it. So thankfully that happened. So I overpaid because the Easter show was 75 and I think the Mother's Day show was like 60 or 65 or something, but whatever. Um, the booth was 10 by 10. Um, I was uh, one of the outer booths. I'm glad I wasn't the interior booth because like I said, I wouldn't be able to have my car, which would have made it more difficult. Plus it was like very exposed there was people who had booths like all the way around for shoppers which was better but there were some people that just had one table and it's just so awkward so their whole back is exposed i don't know that would just make me uncomfortable all day um it was quite busy it wasn't slammed granted i've never been there so i don't have anything to compare but it was a steady flow of people um the majority of my business was in the morning so the show could have been over by noon and that would have been fine with me um, being nine to three wasn't too bad. That was fine with me. Um, it was a little cold, but I'd rather be a little cold than hot. So, um, and it wasn't raining or anything across from me was like a permanent food booth, which was good and bad. I had brought myself like a packed lunch and some Uncrustables and stuff. And I was just going to eat that all day. I had a banana, had an apple and that was all gone by like 10 30 or 11 because just smelling the burgers and the fries all morning oh my god i just i couldn't resist so i ended up going and paying 12 dollars. and having a hot lunch is so good but you just never know what it's going to be like and then the bathroom situation which i would say is 
a pro and a con. The pro was that it was easily accessible as I was at the show by myself. And so I couldn't be gone from my booth that long. There was porta potties like not too far from my booth. Um, so I was able to go over there, but like if there was ever a line, I had to just give up and come back to my booth to make sure that there wasn't anybody there, which is a good problem, right? It's a good problem that I was busy, busy with sales. I didn't even do my sales pitch very often, which was really nice because people knew what the product was. Like I put so much time and effort into like how my booth looks, how my products look, how like my signage is like, I shouldn't have to speak. I should just have to say cash or card. Do you want a bag or not? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm sorry if that's too cocky for you, but like I put way too much front end effort that I shouldn't have to then be like enticing you to buy my product. I'm not a salesperson. I'm just there to have my products. So that's just me. Um, so I paid $75 to be there. I had $164 in sales. I had 12 sales. The average sale was $15.17, which is awesome. I'd love to get it up to $20, but 15 is quite good. Um, it was $112 in cash and 61 in cards. So I had way more cash transactions. Um, I did not run out of any smaller bills though. Um, I keep the, if you've ever watched my videos where I like prep for a show, I have three sets of money. Um, so I keep $300 on me in different locations so that like it doesn't get stolen. Um, but a hundred dollars worth of, what am I trying to say? A hundred dollars of ones and fives three times. So I have three tills and I've just been using the same till. It actually I haven't reset it since the two shows that I did in Quakertown, but both of those shows were terrible. So it's not like I had a lot of sales. Um, Jar openers, I sold $144 worth, 24 jar openers, reusable towels, $32, and that was two reusable towels, and then tissue pouches, one for $6. So I was definitely really disappointed that like the tissue pouches and the wine bags didn't get much traction. People were touching the wine bags. People were asking me about them. And you know what they were all asking me? They were like, oh, are these uh, grocery bag dispensers? And I'm like, really? Like, and a year or two ago when I had those, people didn't want them. So it's like, really? So I'm going to make like 10 or so of them because they're not that complicated. I'm going to make like 10 or so of them for July. And I bet my bottom dollar that people are going to be like, are these wine bag holders? Oh, I don't want a grocery bag holder. I want a wine bag holder. I guarantee you. Or they're going to ask me if it's something else similar, which I can't even think of a gift bag maybe is what they're going to think it is. I don't know. Guarantee you. Um, the three animals that I got at, or three patterns that I got asked for that I didn't have. And as you know, I have a lot of jar opener patterns. I have over 100 jar opener patterns and every show I go to, people are like, do you have this? Do you have that? Okay. So I got asked for a uh, squirrel. I got asked for lemons, which how did I not have lemons? Lemons are my favorite thing. And I have a ton of lemon fabric. I tell you how I don't have them because I hoard my lemon fabric for myself. A uh, squirrel, and butterflies. I had butterflies in the towels, but not in the jar openers. And they ended up just picking something else. But even with 112 different patterns, I still cannot make everybody happy. So I will be on the lookout for some squirrel fabric, some butterfly, flab, fa, mm, butterfly, butterfly fabric. I wonder if I have some back here. Um, I'll have to take a look. And then I know I have lemon fabric. So I'll have to I think I can make the butterfly and the lemon from what I've got, but I've never seen squirrel fabric. So if any of you have found squirrel fabric, link it down for me in the or the comments down below, please. Um, I know such a random thing, but would love to add to the collection. Uh, the pros and cons. So some of the cons I've already told you, like the bathroom, the registering without knowing. And then the other con to me, especially when a show knows what products you have, it really bothers me when they put people who are selling the same product next to each other. So it was me. And then, uh, I don't, I'm not trying to offend people, but like an older woman, right? Like she was older than me. And most of the time I think that I do poorly in my booth because I am not older. Like when I have elder females watch my booth for me, they sell way more than what I sell because people do not believe that I'm the one that could have made the product. So sorry, I just touched the mic. I bet that was loud. Um, so I hurt my booth by being young. Like I should look older to sell more. Anyways, I had this lady who was older next to me selling sewing products, not any of the same product, but the same type of product. And then she's selling it like 
she called them mug rugs so essentially big coasters for a dollar and then what was the other thing oh uh trivets two for six and it's like when you're selling things for like 50 cents it makes my prices look astronomical so like i definitely think having her next to me and having her prices like that hurt me quite a bit like i think i could have done even better if i was placed nowhere near her so and obviously i didn't know that like when i was setting up my booth she was not there she didn't get there until like the ninth hour so you know that that's not in my control but i do not understand when uh show organizers put people who have like things next to each other don't put two two jewelry people next to each other don't put two sewing people next to each other like spread us out i'm not saying not to have any competition but like why would you build a burger king next to a mcdonald's like no you wouldn't you build them a little further apart you know what i mean so that was really frustrating to me um the registering without knowing that's a bit frustrating so the july and the fall show i wrote in the notes like the specific booths that i'd like like i said there was my top two choices and then like an additional 10 of ones that i wanted i don't know if i'll get them but at least it says that there's spots uh sheltered spots available so i am not doing an unsheltered show um so we'll have to wait to see what booth i get uh but i did say that i need to have my car with me because that was so helpful that made it so much easier to do the show by myself um so that was one of the biggest pros for me is how easy it was like to be able to have my car to be able to have my booth to be able to have the bathroom and the food like having all those things right next to each other was so easy for me to run the show by myself um you know like i said the majority of the sales were from 9 to 12 so like it was kind of dull being there in the afternoon but i just like had my audiobook in my ear i was just listening to my airpods and i had a hat on and everything because it was so cold so i had two jackets on so it's not a big deal when someone came up i just took it out like it's it's not the end of the world so i just listened to my book kept myself company um yeah another pro was that there was music playing so i appreciate that and it wasn't blaringly loud because that's the other thing like sometimes there's no music and it's awkward like it's like you can hear everything that everyone's saying and then sometimes the music's so loud that you can't hear yourself think so the music was a perfect like ambiance um and another pro was that it was busy it drew in customers it wasn't so slammed like i've been to expo shows where like i can't see the booth across from me it's just a wall of people it was not that slammed and i think that that's a good thing like when it's a wall of people you have so many people miss your booth because it's just so busy so i feel like there was the adequate amount of people i feel like there was a good amount of people i'm definitely interested to see how the july and october shows go so i'll be sure to inform you of that um, please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, what do you think of my booth? What do you think of my sales? Uh, what do you think I could do better? What do you think I did well? Uh, have you ever been there? Uh, have you ever been to the July show? Have you ever been to the fall show? Let me know. I'm interested to hear everything that it is that you have to say. I'm so happy that we are finally getting the ball rolling and finally had a good show. Um, this was the third show this year and the only one that's been successful so far where I made my booth and then some. Granted, when you put in like the cost of materials and gas and uh, all of that kind of broke even, but it was a nice day. I, I mean, I was cold, but it was a nice day out of the house. You know, it wasn't a, it was a good show. I'm happy. It was good. I'm definitely looking forward to the next one. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.